104.7 Castle Down Radio. Joining me now on Castle Down Radio, I'm joined by Joe McKeldry. Hello, Joe. Hello. Uh, so this year it's been a very busy year for you, hasn't it? It has. Yeah. I mean, it's been a, it's been a um, it's been quite a, a year of like a lot of more shows than normally I would normally do. Um, I mean, I normally do quite a few shows every year, but. The kind of the whole year's consisted of live this year, which has been really enjoyable because normally I release an album around this this time of year, and um, it means that obviously it kind of takes up a lot of my time, so I can't really do a lot of touring. But I've been on the road right through the summer; um, it's been incredible. It was one of your highlights this year, um, kind of going over to America, because um, is this something that you've done before? I've never been to America before, um, and that was the first time I got asked to go out there and do a big um, Pride Festival in Pittsburgh. And it kind of came from nowhere, because I didn't really know that I was known in America, but I'd been, they'd obviously invited me out there to perform, and I absolutely loved it. The crowd was incredible, so supportive. Um, so it's definitely something I've been looking to of going back out there and, you know, hopefully releasing some music, because that was just a performance-based trip. But obviously, I like to go out there and do some promotion and release an, release an album out there. Also, as well as kind of performing in America, uh, you know, you've kind of performed with, and I, I, I say this kind of quite lightly, but what a legend, Dion Warwick. Oh, that was incredible. It was, um, I did a big concert last year in the summer at the Royal Albert Hall called the World Hunger Project for concert, alongside a load of other people. And I was very lucky to be asked by Dion and her team of people that were working on the World Hunger thing if I would duet the special song that was written for the project. Um, so I did that at the Royal Abbott Hall. And then about six months later, I got asked if I would like to record the song, um, which obviously to, to do that for charity first was incredible, but also to be on a CD with a legend as big as Dion Warwick was incredible. Like the once in a lifetime opportunity that I'll never forget. And, of course, as well as that, you know, like, in the recording, did you just kind of have one of those moments and it's like, wow, you know, I'm singing with Dion Warwick? Yeah, well, actually, we recorded it separately. Um, but, but on the day that she recorded, I went in the studio to watch. And just to be in the studio and watch how she works and watch, like, how professional and how respected she is by people in the industry, it was like, I, I was in awe. I was completely in awe and, like, again... It was a, a massive highlight, like, where I was just like, wow, is this actually happening? And I was going to say, she's still got that voice as, as well, which is just incredible. Yeah, and she's, she's been through so many generations of music um, and decades of music. So to know that you stand in a room with somebody with that much experience and that much kind of knowledge of the industry, it's quite an overwhelming feeling. D did she give you any tips uh, when you were there, just kind of watching? She, she kind of was just very supportive, very supportive, very complimentary of my voice, which was, again, incredible, um, and just a really, really nice person. Of course, as well, you've done quite a lot of charity work this year as well, you know, uh, you've done your World Hunger Project, um, but you also did uh, something for the Help for Heroes charity. Yes, I did, yeah, we did a big concert at the uh, Dominion Theatre in um, London, which was a which was great fun uh, with the big RAF military band and there was all sorts of people on the lineup. The overtones, then a lot of West End shows. Um, that was a great great thing to be a part of and something very different for me. Being you know, in a West End theatre doing stuff like that, so that was really enjoyable. Of course, as well as that, um, obviously you perform there at the West End. Would that be something you know you'd kind of like to do? Because you know you've seen people like Will Young kind of venture onto the stage and make it successful. Um, is that something you'd like to do long term? I would love to. I mean, I've been asked to do a lot of shows, um, but it's just finding the right one. It's finding the right part that I can really put my stamp on. And, you know, as well, fitting it fitting the, into the, the right kind of schedule so that it's a really enjoyable process and it's not exhausting. Because I, if I was going to do it, I would want to commit all of my time to it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that I'm always looking in, into doing. Well, uh, you, uh, and I know this is really boring, uh, but obviously you came to fame uh, by winning the X Factor uh, all the way yeah. back in 2009. Um, obviously, you're 18 at the time. Um, how, how did it feel, kind of, uh, you know, kind of, you were a household name at 18. How did you adopt to the fame that uh, came from that show? Well, I mean, looking back, I was very naive and I was very young. I thought I was quite mature then, but each year I get older, I realise that, you know, I, I'm maturing so so fast and so quickly. Um, 
So I, I, I feel, looking back now, I was so young, I was such a, I was a young boy um, in the industry, which is a very, very crazy, ruthless industry. So I felt very, um, I felt very vulnerable, but at the same time, it was an incredible experience, and I, I absolutely loved it. I did, I, I genuinely had one of the best times ever on the show. I didn't have a hard time at all. The crew and everybody were lovely there, and I was very well looked after, but I did, I was overwhelmed at times by what was going on because my life was changing in front of my eyes and it was happening so fast, so it took a lot of getting used to. She was saying, you know, your, your life was changing in front of your eyes. Did you ever kind of have that moment when everything just kind of stopped and you're like, oh my gosh, I've, I've won the X Factor, I've got my kind of debut album in, in my hand, I've had a number one record, you know, were you kind of ever overwhelmed at all? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still get overwhelmed now. I still, I still have moments, um, and when different things happen along the way, you know, it's four years now, so a lot of things have happened. You know, I've been fortunate enough to release four albums, so I, I do still have the moments where I'm like, my God, like, how has this become like what I just call a normal job? You know, um, that I dreamed of for so long. So it is, it is very strange sometimes, and. I do have to take myself to the side and have a little word and be like, OK, calm down, don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's just a kind of reality check, really. It's like, wow. It is. Um, it is, yeah. And, of course, you were saying, you know, it's your dream job. Um, you, you've released uh, four albums so far. Um, I have to say, uh, every kind of album that you've released has, has been different in style. What kind of style do you, do you perform? Because, obviously, you, you performed on Pop Star to Opera Star, and we had a classical yes. album. And yes. now, obviously, your current album is, um, well, you've been developing your songwriting techniques for that. Yep, yeah, here's what I believe, which was the last album, which was out this, which came out this time last year, was... Um, a very different style. I, well, I don't think it was a different style in the sense that people, it was shockingly different. It was just different from the classical. I would say it was more kind of what I did on X Factor with the kind of mid tempo ballads and showing off the kind of vocal range, the pop vocal range. Um, and obviously showing development from doing the classical album, but I enjoy performing all different things. And, I, and I, for a singer, to be able to have four different albums of very different genres of music, it's a real luxury for me to be able to take that out on the road and perform it live because, one, it means that I never get bored, two, it means that the audience never get bored, and nobody ever knows what to expect, so it kind of creates that bit of excitement. Of course, which style um, do you prefer performing? Is it classical or is it your uh, pop ballads? They're very different. They're very different. Uh, you know... In my show, that I'm, the show that I'm out on the road with at the minute is um, one minute you've got two, three really up-tempo, dancey pop songs, then you've got a pop ballad, then you've got something like Ness and Doma. So it really keeps the audience on the edge of the seat throughout the way, and they really go through a musical journey, I suppose, of what I go through when I'm making the albums. But I do enjoy performing the classical stuff. That really, you can see the reaction in the audience when that's sung. Um, but I love having a good good old boogie to a pop song as well and a dance and or involving the audience so I enjoy the differences I don't really have a preferred choice as well as that did you find obviously because of your wide appeal you know for your classical and your pop uh, that your audience is, is just kind of such a mixed and wide range of people completely I mean you could I can look I, I can look into an audience and there can be young kids there there can be teenagers there can be middle-aged women old women young young men, you know, young partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, and there's a real mix of everybody. Um, and that, again, as a singer, to be able to cross across all of those ages is a, is a real luxury as well, you know, and it's, it, and it's, very, it's very humble and very nice to know that it, the music's reached out to that many people, that many different ages. It's great. You were saying that this year uh, you're on tour. Uh, you're currently um, about to come in, I think it's the next couple of weeks, to uh, obviously Bournemouth. Uh, which is very yes. near to where we are at the station. Um, yes. But also next year, you're coming even closer uh, to us here at the station. You're performing at uh, City Hall in uh, Salisbury. Yes. Um, yes. I was going to say, ha have you ever performed at uh, City Hall before? I haven't been to Salisbury before. I performed at Bournemouth in the summer, and um, we got asked if we would go back and do another show. So that one's on the 26th of October this year, Um which which is really exciting. And next year at Salisbury is the Set Your Soul Alive tour, which we've just announced, which is a big tour that's going to be running for quite a few months. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, 
on on the tour next year, there's a lot of places that I've never been before um, and performed live. So Salisbury being one of them, I'm looking forward to coming. As well as that, um, you, you're talking about the tour. You're doing 50 venues all together next year. So as you were saying, it it is a big tour. Um, are tickets available uh, now for anyone you know kind of listening to the interview, thinking, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll get in there before it sells out. Yeah, yeah, the tickets are available. You can get you can get them on the website, which is www.joemckeldreyofficial forward slash news, and all the data on there. Um, and you can you can see all of the, the the different dates and wherever we're going. And obviously, if the Bournemouth show as well is on there as well for this year, and there's a few dates left for the back end of this year too. So it's a um, ton of dates. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say you 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 definitely like to set a challenge because uh, next year as well you're going to be releasing your fifth album. Yes, um, I'm not sure when next year, but it definitely will be out. So uh, it's yeah, it's kind of I suppose going back to the style, it's finding the right kind of style and finding the right kind of songs that I suppose suit me at my point in my career now. Um, so I've been doing a lot of writing, been trying a lot of different material. I just want it to be right. I don't want it to be something that everybody everybody expects because it's the fifth album. It's kind of a landmark album, you know, especially in the industry to make it the five albums is a big is a big deal. So, um, so yeah, I, I want it to be right. And if that means having a wait longer to release it, then I will do. You know, I don't want to just put something out there for the sake of putting it out there. Will, uh, on your new album, will it feature tracks that you've um, uh, wrote yourself? Well, yeah, I mean, the last one did, and, and it, they were received very well. The first two singles released off the last one were songs that I've written. So, um, yes, I, I would like to hope so, and I've been writing a lot of material anyways. I put a lot of, and I'll be putting a lot of, even if some of the songs don't make it on the album, I think the, the thing about next year's show is I really want it to be a fresh new show, so I'm going to be definitely putting new material in anyways, even if the album's out before the tour or after, I'm definitely going to have new material in there. And there's new material in this show um, this year as well, so if anybody comes to Bournemouth, you'll hear new stuff as well. I was going to say, that sounds like a good plug, really, for your, for, uh, your next tour, because, uh, you know, literally everyone can just go buy a ticket and hear something new and different. You know, you're not an artist like um, certain other artists that kind of perform. It's like, yeah, you know, we, I, I won't tell you all the new stuff. I'll just perform from the album. So, you know, it's quite refreshing to kind of hear that, really. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's important. You know, uh, this is now the... This will be, including the X Factor tour, this will be the third live tour I've done. So people have heard a lot of the stuff. And if you've come to a show, like, I like every single show that I do to be different, you know, even if it's on the same tour. So even if it means changing a song around or changing something in it or changing the way I sing a song, I like every night to be different because I feel like if somebody comes to the show more than once, you want to see a diff- you want to see something different. You want to see something new, and also it gives me a challenge by changing things up. And I think by putting new material in, um, it gives people the opportunity to you know to really be a part of the, I suppose one the recording process and two the live process of of the music changing as, as I'm on the road. Of course, uh, as, as well with kind of uh, your touring, have you kind of had uh, any memorable moments uh, out on the road? And it could be for either good or bad reasons. Well, recently I was in Torquay about two weeks ago, um, and I had the first ever obvious fall on stage. I nearly did the splits on stage. <laughs> I slipped on a towel that was on the floor and really hurt me leg, which wasn't too fun. And I could hear the the gasp go through the audience of like, "Oh my God, he's broke his leg!" <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully I was okay, um, and I'm, I carried on like a professional. But that was a close call. I've had many things, you know. Um, I once tried to sing into a water bottle thinking it was a microphone, um, <laughs> which was pretty embarrassing. I made myself look quite stupid. But little silly things like that. But t- to be honest with you, that's all part of a live show. And that, the audience loves seeing things like that, you know, things that are just normal mistakes. It makes them feel like they're a part of it. So I don't mind when something goes wrong. It's just how you deal with it is the important thing. Exactly. I was going to say, I, I definitely do sing with a water bottle, but it's because if you let me near a microphone... Well, it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, exactly. You let me near a microphone talking and there'll be a few windows broke around the place. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, uh, as well as kind of your tour, which is all very exciting, um, kind of outside of uh, music, um, what kind of bands and artists are you kind of listening to uh, at this moment? Um... I was just thinking about this the other day. I haven't, um, I've just bought Jesse G's new album on iTunes. I've just got that. Um, 
which I, which is great. I think she's a really good singer. She's good. She can do some really cool things with her voice. Um, who else do I? I love Lady Antebellum, which are a they're a pop country and western band. They have that big hit over here called Need You Now. Oh yes, um, yeah, yeah. They are their albums like aren't really that big over here. They, can, they tend to just release songs here, but they have some incredible albums and. When I'm writing an album, I really look at their kind of style of writing because I love the way they write stuff. It's very conversational and relatable. Um, who else? I love Beyonce. I love... Um, God, there's so many people. There's so many people. Um, yeah, I, I, there's so many artists now in the industry. It's crazy. Um, especially, you know, so many going out of America and doing so well as well from the UK. So it's very exciting for music. I was going to say as well, um, going back to what you're saying about Lady Antebellum, um, I, I don't know whether you've seen this clip, but it, it's on YouTube and uh, they're performing with uh, Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks. Wow, and I haven't seen that, no. I was going to say, it's really amazing. I mean, there's there's a little part of the set where they do um, a few Fleetwood Mac songs and then Stevie Nicks singing, like, Just a Kiss from Lady Antebellum and stuff. It's, honestly, I'd, I'd really recommend you check that out. That's, you oh, know... So you must be a Lady Antebellum fan and if you know that song. <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've got all the albums, yeah. Yeah, they're great. They're very good. Very, I'll have to check that out. I was going to say, because I, I discovered them through, um, and uh, th- this isn't cool, but uh, I discovered them through the Radio 2 Country Show. I was in the car driving one night, and, you know, yes. and, and you just hear so many tracks, but I was like, oh, that's, you know, really, really good. And, uh, you know, f- further on the line, obviously Lady Antebellum released their album, and uh, I got, I've kind of got sucked into it then. I was like, th- th- this is amazing stuff, you know, what they've done. They are for- brilliant. They, they, they are brilliant. I was introduced to it by a family member um, to listen to it. On an, uh, he said, listen to this while you're on long journeys in the car and stuff. It's a great driving album. Um, and it's a great breakup album as well. Very relatable song. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I haven't had the breakup yet, so, you know, I'm hoping there's not the breakup coming. <laughs> but, uh, well, try it. If you're ever feeling sad, listen to it. It's great. It uplifts you. Uh, I'm about to say I will. Um, I was going to say, I know we've kind of gone off uh, on a little bit of a tangent about Lady Antebellum and loving them, which, uh, which is, is really good. Um, but uh, just uh, before you go, um, as well as that, I, I've noticed that there's some random pictures and uh, videos that you put on your Instagram page every now and then. <laughs> yeah, I, um, do you know I never used to use Instagram very much? Um, up until about a year ago, and then every, somebody was like, you really need to get Instagram, it's a great way of connecting with people and putting pictures on. And I actually think I use it more than Twitter now. Um, I really like it. I just, I think it's fun. I make Instagram videos, just funny little things. I made one a couple of weeks ago where I changed all my hairstyles in like two seconds and it made it look like I was blinking and my hair was changing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've actually seen that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, I just, I think it's fun. It's just, it's just, a, it's a, it's, I just, I, I don't take myself too seriously, so I post silly photos sometimes and I posted one with a big wig on the other day that I found in a dressing room at a, <laughs> venue and my management was like i can't believe you just posted that and i was like oh it's only a bit of fun who cares <laughs> <laughs> uh, so of course uh, I'm, I'm glad now i've found out uh, why the instagram pictures because they are quite funny <laughs> i do have to say um but of course as well as that um are you on facebook and uh, twitter as well as your website yeah i'm at joe mckeldry 91 on twitter and the facebook is joe mckeldry official uh, facebook.com joe mckeldry official and i like to try and use them all as much as possible it's quite hard when i'm busy and sometimes, you know, I'm like anybody else. I sometimes wake up and I think, right, what shall I put on Twitter today? I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I try and post a tweet every day to make sure that I keep in contact with the fans and people that have supported us. I feel it's important. I was going to say, have, have the fans been very supportive, uh, you know, on, on your Twitter and your Facebook? They are incredible. They are very, 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 very loyal fans. Um, some some of them have, have been there since day one, and some of them came when I did Ops, Pop Star, Opera Star, and it's great that they, on, that's the one good, Twitter has many negative sides to it as well as positives, but the one positive thing is, is that a group of people who have the same interests can go on there and share things and stories, and I think that's a really great thing that I wish I had when I was younger, and I was admiring people in the music industry. We didn't have any access like that to, to, to people who we admired and who, who we love, so it's great. So I'm always aware of trying to keep it a nice place, and I try and keep it as peaceful, but it sometimes gets a bit fiery. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but th- that's that's the good nature of Twitter. You, you you can debate it, have both sides, really. Yeah, I mean, sometimes sometimes Twitter... I, I, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Twitter at the minute. I, I sometimes think it's such a throwaway kind of way of, of putting a comment on there, 
you know, for negativity and people bullying people and things like that. That's the one thing I hate about it. Because um, I think it, it is quite, it can be quite dangerous as much as it can be brilliant. So as long as it's monitored well and kept in good, you know, in, in a positive way, I think it's great. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for your time, Joe, especially with all your tours and your upcoming tours. Um, and of course, you know, people can book tickets for your Bournemouth gig this year. But uh, if not, you're back in our area for City Hall in Salisbury next year. Yes, and I can't wait to see what the, the people of Salisbury have for us. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I'm there in the front row, I think, or, or something around. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> well, make sure you sing along. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. <laughs> well, Joe, <laughs> I was going to say, I can't believe I've said I'm going to sing along on the radio now. Thanks. <laughs> Well, who would you do it? Yeah, yeah, I will, I will. <laughs> That's my crazy nature. But uh, thank you very much for your time, Joe McEldry.